Oh, yeah. We got a busy one today. We're talking senior day coming up this Saturday. What is new with Ohio State since the last meeting? Oh, great. Awesome. Maybe that Minnesota game actually did matter for a double buy. How good is Michigan State shooting the three-point ball? And then, oh, yeah, if there was a Formula One track on campus, where would it be? That's right. Let's have some fun today. Woo. Our Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked on Spartans listeners, thank you so much for kicking off your day with us here on Locked on Spartans. I'm your host, Matt Sheehan, and we will guide you through an episode that's going to be pretty basketball heavy, but yeah, we're going to talk some F1 at the end here. But before getting to any of the meat of the show, hey, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. There's a big one coming up on Saturday, and yeah, I feel like I say that before every game these days because, oh, tis the season, it's March, every game is a big one. Even this quad two win against uh, Ohio State should Michigan State be victorious. I don't want to jinx anything more than we already have on this show. We'll get to more of that in segment two, but no, we're going to kick off today's show with a listener question because this is a monumental question. In the history of Lockdown Spartans, we have the youngest listener question of all time, and it pertains to Senior Day as well. Tom wrote to us and said, just wanted to say thank you for doing this podcast, particularly as my oldest son, Thomas, nine years old, is a huge MSU fan and newer newer listener of yours. That is quite the parenting decision right there, Tom, but hey, thank you so much, Thomas and Tom, for both listening to this show. He actually came up with a question for you for a podcast with Senior Night on the Horizon. Who was your favorite Spartan to watch kiss center court for their last game at Breslin? For what it's worth, my favorite was Mateen, which is one of the loudest instances I have heard in probably over 100 games I've been lucky to attend. So thank you for the email, and thank you, Thomas, for the great topical question. Um, God, nine years old. That, That was so cool. To get an email from a kid because I used to listen to a lot of sports radio with my dad growing up, brought back a lot of great memories and um, also gave me a reality check that, hey, nine years old. okay, that was born in 2014, probably. Oh, my God, that's when I graduated. So also having a little bit of a crisis. But yes, what was my favorite senior day moment? Who were my favorite Spartans to watch kiss the Spartan helmet? I love Drew Neitzel, Paul Davis, Draymond Green, all those great players. But Two memories that I have that I absolutely love is Aaron Harris in 2017. He suffered that knee injury, was unable to play the rest of the season, but as Michigan State was up 10 points against Wisconsin, he was able to hobble onto the court with that giant leg brace, kiss the Spartan logo. Um, The Badgers program was very classy with how they handled that too, so that was a cool moment. But look, the the number one moment for me, and this is one that even Thomas might remember because it didn't happen too long ago, it's the Cassius Winston game. Um, I, it's not even prisoner of the moment anymore. This happened three years ago, but this will be an unforgettable senior day memory in the 2020 season. It was a storybook ending of sorts, right, guys? I mean, we have not forgotten it. Um, just everything that Cassius Winston had to endure that season, starting early in the season with the tragic uh, death of his brother, and also just what happened on the court as well. You know, record-setting senior season. He set the Big Ten record for most assists. And also, just the crescendo of the end of the season. They had to win four straight games, all against ranked opponents, to lock up the third consecutive Big Ten title. Cassius Winston at 27 points. It was truly a storybook ending of a regular season for Michigan State. So, I got to go with the Cassius Winston there um, for favorite senior day players and his favorite senior day memories. Of course, the rest of the season got canceled after that. I will not elaborate on that. I'm still not ready to talk about what would have happened. I don't think I'll ever be ready. But yes, as far as senior day goes, it's impossible to beat the Cassius Winston senior day. Now, who's going to have a senior day coming up this Saturday? Because every player on this team has eligibility left. And yes, that includes Joey Hauser, who enrolled into college at Marquette to start his career back in 2005, it feels like. But yes, Malik Hall, 
Tyson Walker, Joey Hauser, all academic seniors, but they could come back. Thank you to that COVID year. So talked about this with Justin Thin of 24 seven sports, not too long ago that I would just, uh, uh, oh my goodness. Oh, I would suspect there we go. got that word out of my mouth. Finally, I would suspect that all three of those players, maybe even four, two, Steven Izzo included, sorry for forgetting him at the top there. I would suspect that all three will kiss the court, but of course, leaving the door open to come back. Now we've seen this more and more commonly um, around different programs that, you know, guys might say their goodbyes and then maybe mull it over in the off season because you, you can't get that moment back if you don't do it and then opt to go to the NBA or play professional ball or whatever decision you decide to make. But Hey, just like Joey Hauser did last year, kiss the court, sit there in the off season, debate your options, and then maybe come back. Now it will be interesting if none of those guys end up kissing the Spartan logo, because that means for sure that, okay, then you could probably hope that they will come back. Now, right now, as it stands, the, the way I would guess, I don't have any inside information. This is all a hunch is that Tyson Walker may be likely to come back. Uh, Joey Hauser, I would say likely to not come back. And whereas Malik Hall, I think that would be a true 50, 50 coin toss. Again, there's a lot of weeks until these guys have to make that decision. So yeah, we'll keep our eye on it on Saturday, but if these guys kiss the logo, that is not the end all be all just want to give caution right there. Uh, now let's talk about this matchup between Ohio state and Michigan state. This is an Ohio state team that has pretty much nothing to play for other than pride. Um, they aren't even gunning for an NIT berth. Uh, they are that far below 500 where they're going to have to win the Big Ten tournament to continue their season into, well, March Madness, whether it's the NCAA tournament or NIT. Maybe the CBI will be calling for them. But that's not to say that Ohio State isn't sizzling lately. Uh, they are coming off of two straight wins. That's right. That was after a just litany of losses, many of them bad. But, yeah, they they won. Their last two games, both at home and both by double digits, one against Illinois and one against Maryland. That's their first back-to-back -back wins since December 29th and January 1st. So these guys are feeling victory for the first time in a long time. Um, of course, last time these two teams met, Michigan State and Ohio State, our Spartans won 62-41. to That's right, kept Ohio State to 41 points um and it's a good matchup for michigan state right uh this is a lot of what we talked about before the first meeting between these two teams ohio state doesn't really have a dominant big man and anytime you're sitting here as a michigan state fan looking at the other team's roster the other team's starters the other team's production it's nice to see that they don't really have anyone thrashing it inside the paint because well of course that's msu's weakness now uh, Akpara, he had zero points last game. Akpara, he is the freshman big man for Ohio State. Um, zero points against the Spartans last game, but a career-high 12 points just in the Buckeyes' last game against Maryland. So maybe he's getting hot. Maybe that was a flash in the pan. But, yeah, a lot of Ohio State's gameplay is around the perimeter. They got uh, Justice, uh, Justice suing. They have Bryce Sensabaugh. So, yeah, I, I, I would not suspect, suspect Michigan State to lose this game. Uh, my prediction is that they will win. Uh, BartTorvik.com has them favored by six points. My guess is that the gambling line on FanDuel will reflect that number as well. And also, hey, let's talk about the magic in the air in Breslin Center for the last 10 senior days over the last decade. That's right. Ever since Thomas has been alive, let's bring it back full circle into this segment. Ever since Thomas has been alive, MSU's never lost a senior day game. They are 10-0 and in their last 10 senior day games. You welcome in a team like Ohio State, a team that you're supposed to beat by six points, according to the computers. Hopefully we can all celebrate. And what will that mean for Big Ten seeding? Hey, maybe I was wrong the whole time. Maybe that Minnesota game will actually mean something. We're going to get to all that and a little more like how well MSU has been shooting the three-point ball lately. Here in a hot segment, I just need to talk your ear off about FanDuel Sportsbook. It is the best time of year to get in on the action at FanDuel. I know a lot of people love NFL, you know, bowl season, the playoffs, the Super Bowl. 
the best time to gamble is this time of year. We got March Madness. We got NIT if you want to dabble in that. We got the Masters coming up. And best of all at FanDuel, if you are a new customer, you get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's right. You get that back in bonus bets if your first bet does not win. $1,000 smackaroos. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, super easy to use, and you get paid quick with Mr. FanDuel. You are not waiting days at a time to wait for that money to hit your account. Mm -mm. You withdraw your money, you're going to get paid very quick on FanDuel. And, hey, that's right, they let you combine your bets for an even bigger chance to win with the same game parlays. Did that not too long ago in the MSU-Indiana game. Actually won. It was great. God, there's nothing like hitting a same game parlay to just get the blood pumping. So don't miss on the chance to get in on the action of the no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Now, okay, get to eat some crow, get to wear some egg on my face because oh, the last week and a half, we did it again. We jinxed something on this show, probably, most likely. Um, this Minnesota game got postponed after the tragic events at Michigan State, and it did not get rescheduled. And a lot of people were up in arms saying, oh, man, this is going to be a big game for Michigan State to miss out on. This could affect seeding. And here I was parading up and down that, no, it actually has very little impact on seeding, most likely. And at the time, it was correct. <laughs> at the time, it was correct. Um... Oh, man. It was something like an 85, 86% chance that a rescheduled Minnesota game was not going to impact Michigan State's seeding. That was even further deepened by MSU's loss against Iowa. It was something like a 7%, 6% chance that this game is not going to mean anything, especially after they lost against Iowa. As you know, on this show, we love to jinx things. I could tell my wife tonight that like, hey, um, just for the heads up tomorrow, I'm going to wake up and drive to work. I, I would wake up the following morning with my car stolen and an email from my boss laying me off. Um, so yeah, I, I don't even know what to say anymore about anything because lo and behold, after all the upsets that have happened in the last few days, yeah, okay, uh-oh, uh, it, it turns out that that 15% chance um, is actually probably going to hit. Now, you know me, I'm not a smart math person. Luckily, Paul Fanson of Spartans Illustrated is a math person. He goes by Dr. Green and White on Twitter. You might be familiar with his work. He wrote a very detailed uh, math-oriented article on Spartans Illustrated, so go check that out. But a few things that we just want to hit here. He tweets out, with 10 Big Ten regular season games remaining, and yes, I'm recording before Thursday night's games, there are still 1,024 different ways for the season to play out, resulting in 557 unique Big Ten tournament brackets. However, in his article, he writes, quote, there are a lot of numbers in the table, but the bottom line is that uh, Michigan State would have had a 55% chance at the double buy right now with the win over Minnesota on the resume. Great. Awesome. Goes on to write, if Michigan State goes on to beat the Buckeyes this Saturday, those odds go to 79% chance at a double bye with a highly desirable number three seed being the most likely landing spot. Sorry, everyone, uh, for jinxing the ever-living you-know-what out of that one. But, yeah, it ends up <laughs> – of course, it, why wouldn't that Minnesota game all of a sudden mean something after talking up and down with facts behind it, uh, how it doesn't matter, but – yeah, I mean, that was stupid. Of course, wonky things are happening in March. What else did I expect? Uh, also, Paul Fanson, he adds this tidbit in there. There's still over a 8% chance at a double buy if Michigan State wins Saturday. But there you have it. So, uh, God bless America. Um, mm, 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 one day I'll learn. But uh, there is a lot more detail written in that piece on Spartans Illustrated. Uh, I'll throw the link to that in the bio. Uh, go subscribe to Spartans Illustrated. So, a lot of great people over there, like Paul Fanson, breaking down all the numbers. But, oh, my God, I cannot catch a break over here. Um, you know what? Let's just continue to jinx things. Why not? <laughs> Let's get nuts. Uh, Michigan State has been in fuego shooting the three-point ball as of late. So let's just talk about it. Let's continue this dialogue, especially as Michigan State – more and more is throwing that small ball lineup onto the court and seeming like a go-to lineup 
as we approach March Madness. Kind of like we've been suspecting all year, right? I mean, when you trim the rotation that tight, it's probably going to be the A.J. Hogarth, Tyson Walker, Jaden Akins, Malik Hall, Joey Hauser lineup if things get to crunch time. Now, if uh, it seems like that Michigan State has been really good at shooting the three-point ball lately, uh, it's not your eyes deceiving you. We'll get to that in a hot second. But first, need to bring up this stat from DK. That's right, Dave Klein of SpartanHoops.com. He tipped me on this. He writes, MSU is 12-2 and two on the season when they've attempted 20 or more three-pointers. The only two games they've lost, Rutgers at Madison Square Garden and the Northwestern game at home. That is is pretty good 12 and 2 when you're shooting over 23 pointers and yeah that makes a lot of sense because michigan state is the best three-point shooting team in the top i'm sorry in in the big 10 they are top 10 in the nation at 39.4 percent however in the conference they only take the 10th most attempts so they are ripping the net from behind the arc at the best clip in the conference but are below average in attempts per game. Let's start seeing more than 23s per game. That might be the recipe to success here. Now let's talk about what's been happening the last three games for our Spartans. All right. The last three games amongst the three best three point shooters who are, by the way, as you may know, Joey Hauser, okay. Tyson Walker, Jaden Akins. Those three guys are all the top five in the conference amongst three-point shooters that have 90 or more attempts. Uh, Joey Hauser, he's number two in the conference. Tyson Walker, number three in the conference. And Jaden Aikens, number five in the conference. Um, if you want to know who's number one, that's Miller Cop over at Indiana. He is shooting at 46%. But let's talk about the last three games for Michigan State. Tyson Walker, okay, he shoots 43.4% on the season. In the last three games, 10 of 14 71% from three. Jaden Akins, 43.2% on the season. He is 11 of 15 his last three games for 73% behind the arc. I know this is a lot of numbers, but these are good numbers. Uh, Joey Hauser, 44.8% on the season. He is 12 of 22 shooting in the last three games. That is 54.5%. Guys, gals, that trio in their last three game games, 33 of 51 shooting from three-point land, that is 64.7% shooting from behind the arc. That is incredible in its own, and it is amazing when you factor in that two of those last three games have been played on the road. Shooting does not travel. I mean, there's a lot of things that can travel in the game of basketball. Defense travels. Uh, you, you can make an argument that rebounding travels pretty well. Outside shooting is not necessarily something that travels all too well. And MSU with those three guys, my my goodness gracious, 64.7% um, shooting. So with that said, uh, Ohio State, they limit their opponents to 319 percent shooting that's fifth best in the big 10 that's top 70 in the nation so it's above average it's not world beating it's not the clamps but it will be another good test for michigan state coming up and this is one thing that i want to see as we have one more regular season game left um and look we're not going to see anything crazy you know uh, we're not going to see a center go off for 22 and 14 you know like th this is something reasonable that i want to see on saturday here and it's just Michigan State finding the open shots the way they have been doing it in the last few games. They have been so great at ball movement, just finding the open shooter, always that one more pass, finding the open guy. So if we could see more and more of that ball movement on Saturday, kind of as reassurance that it will be here going into the Big Ten tournament, into March Madness, I mean, that, that's what we're looking for. Even, even if it doesn't fall at a 64.7% clip, as long as we are finding those wide open looks, I mean, that's going to bode really well against a solid perimeter defensive team that Ohio State has. So we're going to mix things up here in the next segment. Uh, we're going to talk about you know, fundraiser initiatives for the Spartan Strong Fund and why things are getting shut down. That's right. We're going outside of sports. And then we're going to end with some Formula One racing talk. That's right. Talk about a grab bag here to end the show on a Friday. But first, need to talk your ear off about Built Bar. That's right, gang. We're talking about the best protein bars in the land. It says right here in front of me, hey, say it tastes as good as a candy bar, but you know this by now. 
I shoot you straight. It tastes better than a candy bar. These things are amazing. Go find a flavor that you will love, like churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond. You're going to find a flavor that you love at Built.com. And you're not just going to find something desirable for your taste buds. You're going to find something that is amazing on your body because most of these Built Bars, we're talking just 130 calories, just 4 grams of sugar, but a whopping 17 grams of protein. You're not going to feel sluggish. You're not going to feel weighed down. You're not going to be eating this thing wondering, oh my God, does this have 80 grams of sugar? Why do I have the shakes all of a sudden? Mm Mm-mm. Built Bar's got you feeling good on the taste buds and the rest of your body to make you feel powerful through your workouts, your day at the office, your day at the in-laws, whatever you're doing after you wolf down a Built Bar. So what are you waiting for? Go to Built.com or go to Walmart, go to Sam's Club. That's right. They got them over there in the pharmacy section as well. Any way you slice it, Walmart, Sam's Club, Built.com. Load up on your Built Bars. You deserve it. Go find a Built Bar. All right, let's take this show home here. Locked on Spartans at gmail.com if you ever want to reach out, just like these two fine folks have. Well, the first one uh, didn't leave a name, and that's okay. You know, you could be anonymous when you email us as well. The first one is uh, a short email. It was, uh, did you see this? Okay. And then uh, it was a link to a statenews.com story. That's right, state news. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Um, And it, the link was to... The story about Hopcat being asked to end their fundraiser uh, with Michigan State tie-ins, all the proceeds going to Spartan Strong Fund, everything like that. So the gist of it was Hopcat uh, was going to match the beer and cider sales and then donate all the proceeds from the sales and then match it on top of that to donate to the Spartan Strong Fund. Nothing nefarious or crazy like that, but we've seen this... We've seen this happen a little bit here. Um, there's someone that is an amazing uh, a crafter. Uh, her name's Kayla. She had koozies. She was going to raise money for Spartan Strong. She was asked to stop, um, just like Hopcat was asked to stop. Uh, right here in the Spartan or the statenews.com story, it says MSU, however, advised Hopcat to end their fundraiser as they are not an official sponsor of the university alongside the additional ties of the proceeds to alcohol sales. So, not an official sponsor of the university. And they don't want to be tied with alcohol. Okay, now, before I go any further, Hopcat donated $7,500 to the Spartan Strawn Fund anyway. They, they had some quotes from the manager there, and it was like, eh, we're disappointed, but okay, we, we get it. We're not going to be too hung up on this. Well, okay, that's what I'm here for. I'll, I'll be the one that's hung up on this. Um, Maybe not everything in life. Maybe not everything in life. Perhaps not everything in life needs to go exactly by the book. I, I understand, you know, licensing, uh, not having your logo used, your namesake used for different businesses out there. I, I get that most of the time, 100%. You know, you don't want someone selling knockoff sneakers with a Spartan logo on it. You don't want someone selling shirts with MSU insignia on it. You don't want, you know, shady fundraisers that have your name attached to it. I don't think that's what we're dealing with here, though, uh, with Hopcat. Look, uh, just like I said, I mean, this isn't some bar in the middle of nowhere in Montana that you have no connection with, that you're wondering if they're using shady tactics, tactics to raise money for their own business. No, no, no. This is Hopcat, a bar that's been in the community for quite some time. And also, yeah, the stakes for them are pretty high, too, on the off chance that they are being nefarious with this money. If they are caught using this to profit off of it, okay, that is so damaging to their name that it would be crazy for them to even do it in the first place. But hey, maybe I'm just naive. This is a neighborhood bar doing something for a great fund. I mean, this isn't some Cambodian t-shirt company printing out shirts with Tom Izzo's face with uh, Tucker is coming written below it, you know, those spammy t-shirt sites. Like, no... Some of these are crafters that are already in the community. I mean, we're talking about alumni of Michigan State that are trying to give back. And they're getting emails or texts being like, hey, stop. You're essentially your money is no good here. It's it's just annoying. And I get it. Like, I, I, I understand that I'm going to hear from at least one or two people being like, oh, here's what you don't get. Legal jargon. I don't care. I don't care. Like this is a, a nice thing Hopcat was doing for a great fun and save me, save me 
or spare me rather with, with the, we don't want ourselves tied to alcohol sales. When do, when do we turn into BYU all of a sudden? Like if you feel really that strongly for detaching yourselves from alcohol, okay, then, then shut down tailgating, shut down open container on campus on game days. If you feel really that strong about Michigan state, not being tied with beer sales and cider sales. It's Michigan State for crying out loud. Good God. So, yeah, I mean, hat, uh, hats off to Hopcat for donating that money anyway. But it's just like I, you see these stories pop up time to time again. It's like, oh, hey, sorry, we can't go on with our fundraiser anymore, even though we've been doing work alongside Michigan State forever because, you know, we're not an official sponsor. Like, please. The good news is the Spartan Fund has raised – a ton of money already over a million dollars. And that is great. The money's still coming in. So it's great, but it's like, God, just let people help. Let people help use your heads. Okay. Again, not, not, not a random bar in the Appalachian mountains. Like this is a, a bar that's a block away from campus. Just trying to help. Okay. I'll, I'll move on. I'll move on. We are going to move on actually to some F one formula one. That's right. This is a niche sport that people are becoming just in love with uh if you are a drive to survive fan like myself yes the netflix documentary that's what turned me on to f1 uh now i can't speak for the emailer here i believe uh oh my god i just took his email down oh we're falling apart at the end of the show yes thomas wrote in this email and he writes in i believe you've mentioned f1 occasionally on the pod and it's been on the brain with preseason testing starting that's right F1's going on this weekend, first race in Bahrain. I came up with a scenario combining the two. If you'd like to riff on it for a future mailbag, we'll be sure would. Imagine the Big Ten has decided to add an F1-style racing series to their varsity sport. Which teams would have the best car in livery? So, like, the best-looking car. Best drivers and best overall performance. Which campuses would have the most entertaining tracks? All right. Let's get to it. The best car, the best livery. I got to give it to Maryland right now. The fact that they have the, the red, the yellow, the black going on and the, the state flag that they like to implement with all their stuff. I think that would be fantastic. Uh, it'd be a, looking a lot like Ferrari, if you will. So I think that would be a sharp car. Uh, now, the best driver in the Big Ten goes without saying that's Mozzie Smith. Uh, very well documented. That kid has a need for speed no matter if it's a racetrack or a school zone. So get that guy behind the wheel as soon as you possibly can. And best performer, this isn't joking at all, actually. Uh, my father-in-law, he is a mentor for a college eco car um, league or series. Uh, it, it has to do with automobiles, um, transitioning them to be more fuel efficient, stuff like that. It's not so much racing, but just building the car itself. And he works alongside Mississippi State. Now, that's not a Big Ten school. But at these national meets or the national uh, award shows, it's always Ohio State just rampaging through the competition. Like, you think Ohio State has a stranglehold on football or did? Like, their eco-car team is incredible. So, best performers, that, that's, going to be, that's going to be Ohio State. Now, let's get down to courses. Now, if you're listening on the podcast, I'm so sorry because – this is going to be very visual because I got in front of me. That's right. We traced an outline of a, a, an F1 track around Michigan State's campus. I'll try to describe it to you, but this is more of a YouTube play. If you want to hop on, just fast forward to the end of the show and look at what I'm looking at. So if a race were to take place at Michigan State, which, by the way, this would be the best course amongst the Big Ten, massive campus, this is what we're looking at. Have the start and finish line, right where Michigan Avenue and Grand River meet. You're going to race down. You're going to bang a right on Farm Lane. A little bit of turning action right there. You're going to go across the Red Cedar River. You're going to bang a right on Shaw Lane for a quick jaunt. And then you're going to drive past Spartan Stadium. A little chicane action, if you will, by the Sparty statue. Cruise on down right by Jenison Fieldhouse. Go up Kalamazoo. And then a hard right. That's right. Uh, not really a hairpin turn, but almost a hairpin turn back down to Grand River. That's almost a mile on straight. And this track is like 3.2-ish miles, which is pretty on par for a lot of F1 tracks. Now, again, I'm just a bandwagon F1 fan. So I reached out to my great buddy, Dave. Now, he has been involved with F1, uh, God, ever since he could probably remember. He was talking F1 before I even knew what it was. So I deferred to him. I said, hey, if you were to make a track 
at Michigan State's campus, what would it look like? And this is what he has for us. A lot more movement, a lot more fun in my buddy Dave's track. That's right. We're just going down uh, Farm Lane here. We're zigzagging across Shaw Lane. That's the longest straight that you have, just whizzing right by Shaw Lane. You're going to go up through uh, the Munn intramural field. You're going to do the little loop-de-loop -loop hairpin turn around the Sparty statue, go up. Kalamazoo and then you're going to cut across West Circle that's right F1 cars on West Circle if you thought that that little circle wasn't crazy enough well Buster I got good news for you and then a little bit of bus stop action there if you will you could tell that I'm still working on my F1 terminology I will not be threatening anyone's job in the booth there so yeah these are two F1 tracks right there this is about three ish miles as well so um if you hung on to listen this far Thanks a lot. This is a lot of fun uh, for, for me to do. I think it was a lot of fun for my buddy Dave to do. And hey, thanks a lot, Thomas, for that email as well. So, gang, go have yourself a great weekend. Oh, boy. Let's 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 end this regular season on a strong note. Let's make it 11 of our last 11 senior days. Until then, love you all. Go Green. <laughs>